What is up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 2022 Kia Stenga. Without any further ado, let's jump in. Under the hood of the 2022 Kia Stenga, we have a 3.3 liter V6 pushing out 368 brake horsepower and 376 pound for the torque, which is two brake horsepower up from last year's gen. But yeah, after driving this for the whole day, it's, this shit is fast. <laughs> Moving on to the hood, I don't like piano black. I don't know why, it just doesn't look attractive to me. I would have loved to see something like this on here maybe if this was painted the same color as this but i don't know it works well at least it it makes the car look good in my opinion at least but i just don't like the fact that it's piano black so moving on to the grill this is what kia calls the tiger nose grill i don't know how this resembles a tiger in any shape or form because what the hell man <laughs> i think it's just marketing being marketing I'm moving on to the lower grill. I like how this is carried down here as well. Well, at least the material. It's not piano black. It's a nice blend of different materials, mostly plastic, but different colors. <laughs> and also these vents are real. They form an air curtain around the front wheel. I have checked and uh, I, can get, I can verify that it leads some way 100%. And this right here controls the adaptive cruise control sorcery and whatnot which is very good in this car i've been using it all day on the highway and i have zero complaints about it and this is the front camera of course one thing i also really appreciate is that kia included this here so in case you need to um, plug your car in in the cold winter months and i live in winnipeg it gets up to minus 50 here sometimes so just having this as an option and not leaving your cable dangling around here is just very nice so and also the paint color is called Ascot green this is one of the new colors for the 2022 model year and actually this is my favorite color out of the uh, out of all the colors Kia offers for the Kia Stinger well the new Kia logo this is another update that the 2022 model came with I don't mind the design of the Kia logo I just wish wish it was a bit smaller maybe like 20% smaller then yes I'll agree with that but the way it looks right now it just looks tacky it looks like it looks like something someone would get from the aftermarket you know community or something but it just doesn't look pretty exactly I don't know let me let me know what you think in the comment section and the headlights haven't changed for this year's model it's still the same um, I like the original design and I have no complaints with this. I have used them at night and they're, they're fine. They illuminate everything I need uh, to see driving at night. And moving on to the side, I like the, f the wheels of the 2022 Stinger. Um, these are 19s and right behind, you can see the Brembo brakes wrapped around 350 millimeter vented brake discs up front. And out back, you have 340 millimeter vented brake discs. And right to the side, you have more of that, I don't know, bronze slash, I don't know, it looks like a mirror to me <laughs> with a slight dark tint, but I, I, anyway, I like it. I, I prefer the, this approach way better than say something like chrome, for example, or maybe piano black. And also these lead somewhere as well. So I can verify to you that that is real. Also this trim here, I like, that it's not chrome it matches with the side mirrors and also this trim bit down there and also the grill and of course the side um, the side mirror and this also comes with cameras to help you in case you want to switch lanes while you're driving for those of you who don't really know how to drive i am happy kia didn't change much in terms of body lines uh i love it i don't think they need to change anything that in that regard and down here the exhausts I want to say they're real for 2022 because most cars these days hide their tailpipes anyway. Most manufacturers choose to. But the fact that they didn't hide this, good job Kia, good job Kia. And here you have a diffuser. Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if this is real or functional, but it does add a bit of appearance to the car or more aggressive appearance rather to the car. 
The trunk of the Kia, uh, Kia Stinga is 660 liters with the seats up and with the seats down it's 1,158 liters. So personally I'll go with this choice uh, uh, rather than go with something like the G70 for example because I like biking a lot and I take my bike to trails and whatnot. So just having to live with this without taking the front seats or oh, sorry not the front seats the front tires of my bike out before I go around with it is just very convenient 22 Kia Stinger the door sounds nice and solid the door panel here I like that Kia used leather down here but I would have loved to see leather up here as well but they had to cut costs in certain areas in order to keep this car cheap and affordable to people but uh, yeah well at least you get some sort of leather and moving on to this side you have two person memory seats and it's one touch automatic for all four windows one thing I love about the Kia Stinger this one specifically is the Harman Kardon sound system. It's a 16 speaker premium audio system and I have been playing music all day. I think it's slightly better than the Acura I drove recently. I love the overall design of the steering wheel of the 2022 Kia Stinger. I like that it's a flat bottom steering wheel and here also you have the new Kia logo and you also have the GT logo here reminding you that you're in the GT Elite uh, which is the one I'm sitting in currently right here you have the start stop button so to start the car up you put your foot on the brake and push the button it comes to life so let's fire up the car and hear how it sounds I have no issues with the design of the gauge cluster. I think they look sharp and nice. Um, it was a bit of a surprise to me when I didn't, when I sat in here and I didn't see like a digital gauge cluster, which is something the G70 has. So I don't know why Kia didn't do this because Kia and Hyundai are the same company. So why isn't it here? I guess we'll never find out. But um, in the middle, you have a seven inch display and you can cycle through different modes. You can see your gauges, uh, turbo boost, uh, turbo PSI rather, and um, directions for navigation, also your lane keep, keep assist and attention level, and also your speedometer. One thing I didn't really like about this car is the steering wheel, I'm not getting any feedback from it. It's just, it's, it, it's comfort oriented basically. And to see that in a sporty car or a car that's meant to be sporty, was just a bit of a disappointment to me. So I really know where the front wheels are facing until I you know, move it around a bit. Then I can get a sense of where my front wheels are or what they're doing. But other than that, you just have to keep guessing when you're driving there. One thing I was also happy to see was the steering column being electric tilt and telescopic. Um, it really saves you the trouble of having to fiddle around with you know, the lever here and bring it up. And it's always so aggressive every time. I don't know why, but um, this is more silent and more a cleaner setup basically and you can also set up your seating position here and not have to worry about fixing this ever again unless you grow taller or something one thing that surprised me again too was this part right here covered being covered in leather i do see a lot of mercedes-benz design elements from the s-class i feel like these were directly plagiarized man and these look premium on camera but i'm afraid they're not they don't feel premium these are completely plastic but they, they fool you into thinking they're metal which i don't know depending on how you feel about that then um yeah i don't mind it personally as long as it looks premium I, I, i'll probably not have to interact with this as much i'm just gonna plug my phone in and just use apple carplay which is on the screen and if, if, chances are if you have a smartphone you're just gonna worry about apple carplay and Android Auto. You're just gonna use that instead of having to use the regular infotainment system here. But if you choose to, it isn't bad really. Kia has one of the best infotainment systems in the game, in my opinion. Um, I find something like the Mercedes-Benz being too weird. Like, it, it comes with a lot of 
the menus are buried under sub menus so i have issues with that but with this it's literally straightforward you could walk in here after not being in any kia you could walk in here for the first time and just feel right at home with this system one thing i also appreciate that kia did was they did not take the eight you know the hard touch buttons for the hvac system away from us because most manufacturers these days they just bury it in the sub menus of the infotainment but i like that they presented this option to us at least we can change or you can increase the temperature here blah 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 or do whatever you want and down here you have a wireless charging pad and also some space for you to keep your keys or um change for example and this is the gear selector which controls the eight speed sportmatic transmission this knob down here controls the drive mode so you can switch from sport to comfort to eco to smart and also you have the option to select custom so you can you, you can configure your car you can configure the car as you please let's see if we can actually do that from the infotainment so let's find drive mode settings vehicle one thing i'm also noticing is it's a bit slow the system it's just a little bit slow i wish it was a little bit faster maybe probably half a second faster but it's not the end of the world anyway and chances are i will be using apple carplay for this so let's try to tweak the drive mode so custom here you have the option to customize your own custom drive mode you know you can switch the powertrain from comfort to eco to sport or whatever you can change the steering wheel personally i just leave the steering wheel on comfort because it's just better to drive in and also suspension i don't put it in sport because the roads in winnipeg are what they are besides this construction i think every two blocks <laughs> anyway all wheel drive i'll always leave it on sport personally because you know just adding up adding the sporty effect this i'll leave on comfort because i just like a more comfort ride quality and powertrain of course we have to leave powertrain on sport because that just helps with the engine response and moving on down here you have your ventilated and heated seat controls and also the heated steering wheel control here and also here you have the parking camera button which you can press to reveal whatever it is beside you in case you're in a tight space ever and this is the auto start stop button personally i always just leave it off because i don't like ha i don't like having to deal with that to be honest it's just a bit annoying after some time there's also a tuning button here in case you care about that i personally just cycle through my music playlist by using this button here so i'm happy i have that there so i never have to worry about that at all you have dual zone climate control here which isn't bad and moving on to this side moving on to the cubby area it isn't bad the overall size i like how wide it is and it's also lined in felt so if you put things here like change they won't rattle when you're driving moving on to the glove compartment i love the glove compartment it's nice and huge and it's also lined with felt so if you put things in here they will not rattle the seats uh, they are eight way adjustable they're very very comfortable you can get in different seating positions nice and low and also one thing i like too as well is whenever you're moving the seats you also get this display on here that shows you what you're doing one thing i don't really like is the sunroof in this car i would have loved to see a panoramic sunroof but unfortunately this is all we have to deal with but hey at least you get something and moving on to the back seat me sitting behind myself i have decent amount of legroom but i don't have decent amount of uh, headroom to be honest it's a bit tight and i am six feet tall so if you're a tall individual you will uh you will have to squeeze back here 100 percent but overall uh yeah i could go for a long drive in this sitting back here to be honest one thing i do appreciate having is the 12 volt power outlet down here at least kia gave you something and also you have one usb port down here unfortunately the time has come where i have to take this car back to the dealership i have enjoyed spending the day with the all-new kia stinger i'm sure you could probably tell by the grin on my face throughout the whole video huge shout out to daniel dunker for letting me borrow this car 
And if you're in the market for Kia Stinger or any Kia product in general, I highly recommend you talk to them. I will leave your contact details in the description box below. So what are my final thoughts on the Kia Stinger? I think it's the perfect daily driver, you know? It's practical, it's got a good amount of power, and it's a very reliable car. With that being said, I must admit that it's not the most comfortable in its segment, but it definitely won't leave you wanting to see a chiropractor after each drive. So if you're in the market for a car in this realm, I definitely think you should shortlist the Kia Stinger. It will leave you impressed.